In this video, we're going to talk about how people, specifically food handlers, can contaminate food. And there are several ways that that can happen. First way is if you're sick, particularly if you have a foodborne illness or foodborne illness symptoms, such as nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, or jaundice, which is a yellowing of the skin and eyes. If you have uncovered cuts or wounds, an infected wound can contaminate food and bacteria in food can infect a wound. If you cough or sneeze into food, so it's important to sneeze into your armpit. So you can also contaminate food by touching surfaces or objects and then touching food. This is where the fecal oral routes that we were talking about in part two come into play. If somebody else has touched that surface that has not washed their hands, then you transfer that bacteria onto whatever food that you're preparing. If you touch your skin, hair, face, or wounds, you can introduce all sorts of bacteria into food to contaminate it. Things like Staphylococcus aureus are naturally present on your skin, so you have a very good chance of transmitting that into food. Using dirty uniforms or aprons can be a source of contamination as well. Uniforms are left out at room temperature, so they can grow bacteria very easily at the temperatures that they're generally at. Another way to contaminate food is by doing things like spitting, chewing tobacco, smoking, chewing gum, eating and drinking while you're in a prep area. All of these things either involve touching things that have been in contact with your mouth or particles coming out of your mouth and potentially contaminating food. There are some important hygiene practices, that is, things that you can do to prevent any of this contamination from becoming a problem. So we're gonna review some of those practices. The most important hygiene practice is hand washing. And we're gonna go over exactly how to do that in just a moment. But first of all, we're gonna go over what you need to wash your hands after doing. So the list of things you should wash your hands after. Eating. Drinking. Going to the bathroom. This one is obvious. Touching your skin or face because this can transmit staph onto food. <coughs> Sneezing or coughing because this is a direct application of germs onto food. Cleaning because this can cause chemical contamination. Touching dirty dishes because you're touching something that's touched other people's mouths. Touching money because you're touching something that has been in people's wallets or pockets leaving the kitchen and coming back because you might have touched surfaces on the way there, touching any animals, including service animals, and finally, touching any high-touch surfaces like doorknobs, light switches, or cell phones, because all of these things are things that can transmit bacteria from those particular items onto food. So, these are the steps for washing hands. First of all, don't wear washes while working in food service. This is so quick, we're gonna show you in real time. The first step is wetting your hands with warm water, and then you're gonna add soap. You scrub your hands for 15 seconds, making sure to get between your fingers like that. Keep on scrubbing a little bit. Then you're gonna rinse your hands. Keep your fingertips down, and that makes sure that everything rinses off easily. Make sure all the soap is off of your hands. And then you're gonna use a paper towel or a towel to dry your hands. It's important that you thoroughly dry your hands because bacteria can stick to wet hands. Also, hand dryers aren't really great for this because they can distribute germs back onto your hands. Hand sanitizers have become very popular, but it's important to note that it doesn't replace good hand washing. Also, make sure it dries completely before you handle any food. It can be used in addition to, but not in place of proper hand washing. So when it comes to caring for your hands when you work in food service, there's a few things that are important to remember. First of all, keep your nails clean and short. A lot of bacteria can build up underneath there and that can contaminate food. Also, no false nails because they can come off into food items. And finally, no nail polish, even clear, because that can chip and end up contaminating food as well. So next we're gonna talk a little bit about glove use. So there's a few important things to remember. The first is to use food service grade and avoid latex. Now these are not food service gloves because they're a little bit difficult to find, but you wanna avoid latex because people can have allergies to it. The line is to dispose of them after you use them. Don't wash and reuse them. This may seem like kind of a silly rule, but for every silly rule, there's a silly person who tried it. 
Always use properly sized gloves. If they're too big or too small, they tear a lot easier. Put them on carefully to avoid any rips and also to avoid contaminating the gloves. Check for any rips or tears in your glove, and if you have any, change out your gloves. Don't roll the gloves to make them easier to get on because that can contaminate the outside of the glove with things from the inside. It's also important to not blow into the gloves to make them easier to get on. This can contaminate the gloves in the same way that sneezing or coughing can. It's very important to change your gloves on certain occasions. If they become dirty, so if they get any soil on them, if they get torn, if you change foods like going from raw meat to vegetables or even from vegetables to raw meat, if you touch your phone or any other surfaces that might have been touched by hands or after handling any raw food. It's also really important to wash your hands between each glove change. So every time you change your gloves, if you're switching tasks, you need to wash your hands each time. Glove use, like hand sanitizer, is not a replacement for hand washing. You should handle all ready-to-eat food, meaning food that won't have any preparation or cooking before going to a customer, without gloves. Always use gloves when handling these foods, unless they're going to be cooked later. For example, cutting up tomatoes for a tomato sauce. It's important to always shower before a shift in food service to make sure that any contamination from your day doesn't go to work with you. It's also very important that you wear a clean uniform. Bacteria can grow at room temperature, so any dirty uniforms from previous shifts can grow bacteria overnight. It's also super important to wear a clean apron as well. It may be important to have more than one apron available in case you spill something on your uniform that can contaminate future things that you're preparing. In food service, you have to pull long hair back and wear a hat or a hair restraint such as a hairnet. This is as much to keep hair out of the food as it is to keep you from touching your hair. Hair naturally grows Staphylococcus aureus, also known as Staph, so it's very important that hair not come into contact with food either directly or through hand-to-food contact. Make sure any of the hair clips or accessories that you use don't have beads or rhinestones. If these come off into food, they could become physical contaminants that could cause injury to your customers. False eyelashes could also become a physical contaminant, so they should be avoided as well. Plain bands, such as a simple wedding band, is the only jewelry allowed on your hands. Also, no bracelets or watches because they can cling on to contaminants. If you have a cut or a wound, you want to cover it up with a bandage and then you'll wear a glove or a finger cut, which is pretty much like a glove for one finger. So the following you don't want to do in areas where food is being prepared. Eating. Drinking. Smoking, because you're touching something that's touched your mouth. Chewing tobacco, because particles can come out of your mouth onto food. And also chewing gum for the same reasons. If you do have a drink in the prep area to drink every once in a while, it has to have a lid and a straw. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is how to handle illnesses in your employees. The first thing is that you need to train your staff on foodborne illness symptoms and have documentation that you train them to stay home when they're sick and what symptoms classify as foodborne illness symptoms. We've talked about this in earlier videos. To refresh your memory, those symptoms are vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, and jaundice. There are two terms that are important to understand with how to treat staff with illnesses in your establishment. The first is to exclude. This means that they should stay home completely and should not come into work. The next is to restrict. This means they shouldn't work around food, so doing things like being a cashier or a hostess. So staff members that should be excluded are ones that have any foodborne illness symptoms and they should stay home until symptom-free for 24 hours. The other reason that food 
workers should be excluded is if they have a foodborne illness diagnosis. This is a little different in that you have to stay home until you're cleared by your regulatory authority locally. The illnesses that require this are Salmonella typhi, which is typhoid fever, Salmonella, E. coli, Shigella, Hepatitis A, and Norovirus. Food workers should be restricted, meaning they don't work with food if they have a sore throat or fever. The exception to this is that if they work in a location that primarily serves high-risk individuals, such as nursing homes, hospitals, and schools. Hopefully within this video, you've learned a lot about personal hygiene and the ways to behave in food service when it comes to that. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.